On a perfect night for soccer, we are in America's first capital city, Williamsburg, Virginia, on the campus of the College of William and Mary for tonight's key CAA match between the Dukes of James Madison University and the William and Mary Tribe. This is Albert Daly Field inside Martin Family Stadium, the home of William and Mary soccer and the site of tonight's NSCAA special telecast right here on NSCAA TV. And these are the William and Mary soccer supporters, the Tribal Fever preparing for their march to the match inside Martin Family Stadium, adding to the great atmosphere and enthusiastic crowd on hand for a critical game with CAA championship and tournament implications. Continental Tires, the presenting sponsor of College Soccer Night on NSCAA TV. Hello everybody, I'm Dean Link along with former Georgetown coach Keith the Bassick and welcome to William and Mary and Keith the Bassick. Tonight's game will go a long way in deciding who gets the number one seed and perhaps wins the CAA title. No, it, it is so exciting in college soccer when you get to the final regular season games in the conferences and there's so much on the line, not just for winning the conference and seeding, but also for NSA tournament selection implications that are here for William and Mary. All right, let's take a look here at the standings with Drexel, UNC, Wilmington, William and Mary, Northeastern and Delaware bunched at the top all with a legitimate chance to be CAA champions. Yeah absolutely one of them will be there by the end of the night but also there are six teams that get in and College of Charleston's one of those trying to fight to get in tonight as well. Four of those teams with a chance at the regular season title are in action tonight in addition to our game right here between JMU and William and Mary there are two other crucial matches to determine the CAA regular season champion. Yeah, and what we're seeing here is College of Charleston. Ralph Lundy is hosting Drexel. Doug Hess's team at Drexel won the CA last year and got into the NCAA tournament for the first time. UNC Wilmington led by Aiden Haney hosting Northeastern led by Brian Ainscoff. Another two teams that have a chance to win it all. All three of these matchups kick off tonight and we'll keep you apprised of the scores in the other two games. Of course, the championship tiebreaker combinations are too many to count, but break it down in the simplest form, Keith. Well, that's what we have to do for me is break it down simple. And now we have three things to look at. At Drexel, if they win, it doesn't matter what else happens. UNC Wilmington, they need help. They have to win. Drexel lose or tie. And as we see for William and Mary, the host team tonight, they need to win with Drexel and UNC Wilmington losing or tying. Who knows? It could work out for the tribe here tonight. Go to NSCAA TV for a full breakdown of all CAA championship possibilities. And Keith Bassett, let's turn our attention now to this game here, a big one between William & Mary and James Madison. Of course, William & Mary led by Chris Norris, who replaced the legendary Al Albert. Yeah, and he's doing a good job replacing Al Albert. And he's 20 years here at William & Mary, Chris Norris, in one faster or another. And right now they're playing, obviously, to try to win the CAA, but also to try to get into the NCAA tournament. They have an exciting team, a fairly dynamic team with a lot of pace that can get in behind James Madison. Speaking of legendary figures, Dr. Martin at James Madison, he's been there forever tough year this year but you know it's always tough in this rivalry game no and you actually said the key word there because you can really throw the records out when the ball starts rolling because of the rivalry and James Madison yeah they do not they're not going to get into the CA tournament but they're playing for their pride and I think that Tom Martin is going to have these guys ready for an exciting game tonight all right Wes Kempton caught up with both coaches before the kickoff I'm joined by Chris Norris head coach of the tribe men's soccer program coach a lot going on tonight, a very big stage. How do you expect your guys to be composed? Well, we've, we've been really good at just focusing on each individual game all year and just focusing on trying to play the way that we want to play. And uh, I expect that tonight will be no different. Last two games have been on the road. They've been close games. Home field, how, how much of a factor will that be? It's been big for us in conference play. We were 3-0 at home in the conference, and so we're hoping that we can carry over that momentum tonight. Well, best of luck. A rivalry game, and we wish you the best. Thanks a lot. I'm joined by Tom Martin, head coach of this James Madison program. Coach, big game tonight. You really have an opportunity to make some waves. Tell me about what you're expecting. Well, it's always been a really good rivalry with William and Mary and Jamie. It goes back to when Al Albert and Bob Vanderwerker were coaching, you know, two kind of legends of the game, and it's just continued ever since uh, late 60s, early 70s. William and Mary's an excellent team this year. Normally, both teams are fighting for postseason competition. That's not the case for us this year, but uh, we're going to give it our best shot and see what happens. Well, best of luck, Coach. We wish you the best. Thank you very much. Today's interviews are presented by Shattuck St. Mary's, a college prep boarding school with a full-time residential soccer center of excellence for boys and girls and a member of the U.S. Soccer Development Academy. To learn more, visit s-sm.org. 
And we are ready for the introduction of the officials and players. Here is our public address announcer, Ed Sadowski. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to tonight's match between your William & Mary tribe and the Dukes of James Madison University. The officials for tonight's game, the referee is Sean Papperman. The assistant referees are Matthew Franz and Kevin LaFerrier. Tonight's match will soon be underway, and we will introduce the starters for each team. It is now time to meet the starters for the visiting Dukes. A 6-2 senior, number 00, Colin New City. A 5'10 sophomore, number 3, Tyler Durbin. A 5'11 junior, number 10, Jonathan Barden. A 6' junior, number 11, Josh Grant. A 6'2 senior, number 12, Mike Whitaker. A 5'11 senior, number 13, Carl Monroe. A 5'9 junior, number 14, Stephen Mashinsky. A 6'2 junior, number 17, Daniel Simpson. A 5'9 senior, number 18, Adam Bastidas. A 6'0 sophomore, number 22, Tom Fui. And a 6'4 sophomore, number 29, Bjarke a. O. Steinson. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's meet the starters for your William and Mary tribe. A six foot freshman, number 22, Mac Phillips. A six one freshman, number two, Ryan Perry. A 5'11 sophomore, number eight, Chris Dunn. A six foot sophomore, number nine, Ryan Flesh. A 5'9 senior, number 10, Chris Perez. A 5'11 junior, number 11, Josh West. A 5'11 senior, number 14, Will Smith. A 5'9 junior, number 15, Marcus Luster. A six foot junior, number 16, Chris Alberston. A 6'1 senior, number 18, Roshan Patel. A six-foot sophomore, number 24, Jackson Eske. The coaches for tonight's match, the Dukes are coached by Tom Martin and he's assisted by Tom Foley and Sean Martin. The tribe is led by head coach Chris Norris and his assistants, Brendan Bordage, Tom Duffy, and John Kamara. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remove your caps for the singing of the national anthem performed by William and Mary's own gentlemen of the college. Members of the armed forces and veterans who are present, but not in uniform, may render the military salute. stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting Oh, uh -huh. 
Wow, what a great job there by the gentleman. That was moving indeed as we take a look here at the William & Mary starting lineup under Chris Norris. Yeah, William & Mary plays in a 4-4-2. They have a couple dynamic, exciting forwards. Number 24, Jackson SK with five goals. And also watch his partner, number 11, Josh West, with six goals. And the starting lineup for Dr. Tom Martin's James Madison team, a little bit different formation for the Dukes. Yeah, the Dukes come in, they play in a 4-2-3-1. Their team has been decimated by injury and illness, but with also a dynamic forward in number 11, Josh Grant. But it's a very inexperienced goalkeeper, Colin Newcity, who's going to have to come up big tonight playing away from home with William & Mary with so much on the line. Well, we are delighted to be with you here at the beautiful Albert Daly Field, named after Al Albert, the legendary men's soccer coach, 401 wins. Stick around at halftime for an unbelievable piece on not only Al Albert, but John Daly, who's still getting it done for the w William & Mary women's soccer team. Yeah, and hence, of course, the name of this field and, and, and aptly named for Al Albert and John Daly. And John Daly and the women's team having another successful year in the Colonial Athletic Conference. It's going to be fun tonight. Our producer is George Krieger, and our director is Steve Shaw doing a fantastic job right here on NSCAA-TV. And we're delighted to be with you for this college soccer special. Dean Linky, along with longtime Georgetown head coach Keith the Batsnick and your home team, William and Mary, are in white, green, and white. James Madison are in all purple, and we are underway here at the home of the tribe. And, well, I'll tell you what, the national anthem, though, the gentleman, are you kidding me? Talk about setting the tone, Keith. That was awesome. Well, that set the tone for tonight here. No, hopefully that motivates these players. Not that the uh, William & Mary players any, need any motivation. They're playing to try to be the CAA champions if they win and a couple of other things happen. They could do that at the end of tonight, but also to win to be in contention for an at-large bid in the NSA tournament. Well said. The Tribe come in with that 8-4-2 and two record. James Madison comes in 6-9-1. and one. James Madison just one win, five losses. But the Tribe 3-2-1. and one. This one's way out of bounds. And it'll be a goal kick early doors here for the visitors from James Madison. You had the opportunity to talk to Dr. Tom Martin, the former Davis and Elkin star. And what did he have to say before the game as you take a look there at Sean Papperman, the center official running the show here tonight. Well, Tom Martin, obviously, you know, disappointed in the overall season they've had. I think he, he felt that they could have put something together as the season went on. They could be competing for the top of the CAA, but they truly have been decimated with injuries and illnesses. So mono on the team, a couple of other injuries, and, and, you know, unfortunately they sit here without a chance to get into the CAA tournament. Tom Fuhi plays it out wide. Now it'll fall to the feet here of Tyler Durbin. Durbin. Can't run it down, and now here comes William and Mary. The Tribe. Boy, we started the show talking about a picture-perfect night. Are you kidding me, Keith Batic? As a player, you cannot ask for better conditions than what you have here tonight. Well, you know, you can't ask for them at any time of the year, but I think it's November, <laughs> it's November 6th. I mean, it's absolutely perfect down here. And the field is in fantastic condition for the end of the season also. Josh West will spread it wide as they... Try to find the feet there of Patel. Kept alive here by William and Mary. Patel number 18. He will come forward as they switch it. The other side to Chris Perez. Perez inside the 18 now. Perez will try to break you down. Takes a shot. Trying to earn a corner kick. It'll be a throw in down near the corner flag. And William and Mary got to be feeling it here in front of a nice crowd. Well, I think one of the keys for William and Mary as well is we see the replay and, and Perez going at, at the left side all nights we see the corner kick coming back out is, is William Mary taking advantage of playing at home and and James Madison being down on numbers throw in came very quickly this one will go out of bounds it'll be a goal kick back to James Madison and Chris Norris great stuff from West Kempton actually setting the table with both coaches but Chris Norris you talk about a guy who gets what the tribe is all about under the tutelage of Al Albert. He played for Al Albert, and now he's the man in charge. Well, and he was a really good player, too. Uh, you know, I was at Georgetown when he was playing at William & Mary, and we played them a, a, a number of times, and probably when in the mid-'90s we, we had our best teams at the time, they had their best teams at the time, and you know, Chris was always one of the guys you have to talk about in, in a scouting report. Over the ball here now, Jonathan Barden. He'll leave it for the two center backs. Barden sits in front with Daniel Simpson as that 4-2-3-1 will morph sometimes into a 4-4-2. We'll keep an eye out for that as they spread it out wide to Monroe. Carell Monroe goes out of bounds. It'll come back to William and Mary. 
So much on the line. And this is what's great about this time of the season. A great job here by our team breaking down all the tie-breaking scenarios in the simplest form. Drexel controls their own destiny, though. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's just say they broke it down to where it needed to be broken down to. <laughs> three options. I couldn't go past three. There are 20, <laughs> 27 options, are there? Yeah. You know, and, and, and as you know, I did not go into coaching for math or anything like that. So the three options were perfect. Drexel wins. It doesn't matter. William Mary needs to take care of business. And then get also a little help from UNC Wilmington. Yes. So we'll see what happens for the Tribe. And great is we've got more action. The foul right there. Taken down on the ball there. Coming forward with Albuston. And Albuston will earn a dangerous free kick. Now for the Tribe. Very interested is Patel over it. Also circling over it, Chris Perez, the midfielder here from Annandale, Virginia. Perez will take a shot near post, but can't get by Colin New City, the redshirt senior from Harrisburg, Virginia. And there's the shot here on the replay, Keith. Yeah, one of the things, I mean, he obviously didn't want to that was fairly deep for a shot on, on target. Having said that, this is only New City's fourth start this year, and they had uh, injuries and illnesses with their keepers, and you know him coming in like that, why not test him right away? Ball will go out of bounds back to James Madison. The last time out, James Madison fell 2-1 to one to Georgia Southern in their final non-conference game and home game of the season. Senior Josh Grant scored his team-leading seventh goal of the season in the 36th minute in that one. Meanwhile, William & Mary played to a 2-2 draw at UNC Wilmington on Saturday. Both teams scored on their first shot of the game as David Sizemore scored in the sixth minute for the Seahawks and the Tribe's Josh West tied the game in the 12th minute. That's some efficiency, Keith. <laughs> so I'll get right back into it. Uh, you know, but I'll I tell you one of the things with William Mary watching them all, already is this ball that they just played is they really want a high tempo and to try to put James Madison under pressure. We've seen both a corner kick and a free kick come from their wide players, Chris Perez and Chris Albertson, going at players one-on-one. -on -one. I think we're going to see that quite a bit. Especially, I think, this right side with uh, Perez because he's going against Tyler Durbin, who's really a right back playing left back by default because of their injuries. William & Mary comes in as the number 21 team in the country in the latest polls out by the National Soccer Coaches Association of America and presented by Continental Tire. Somehow the flag stays down as that ball is deflected and James Madison now, as Keith Tabatsik pointed out, doesn't matter about the records here in this rivalry game as you're always going to get the best from both teams. No, I mean, you, you wouldn't be coaching and being as successful as Tom Martin is for all those years unless you're going to get your players ready regardless, you know, of what your standing is and what things are. And, you know, Tom Martin is the winningest. Uh, hold on here, Dean. Cross sent in by James Madison. The shot there not quite on frame as it came across and found Mike Whitaker. And off Mike Whitaker's head, it'll be a goal kick back now to William & Mary as you take a look at that cross, Keith. Yeah, and Mike Whitaker kind of sneaking in in the back there. It wasn't going really very well. Uh, you know, it wasn't a bad chance because of the, if he had been able to head that with a little bit more authority, that far post was open. And, and that kind of came out of very little pressure that James Madison sustained. So, you know, j one thing with William & Mary, feeling good going into the game, playing at home and having a couple good surges early they obviously still have to take care of business at the other end and we were just talking that Tom Martin is not going to have his team you know just fall back uh, he is the winningest coach active coach in uh, division one history 468 wins remember Al Albert retired with 401 here comes William and Mary trying to thread the needle there to number 11 Josh West as West the junior from Stafford Virginia and West comes in, leading the team with six goals and one assist. Second in points behind Jackson SK. Throw in here now for William and Mary, wearing that white, green, and white. It's knocked out of bounds. It'll come back to William and Mary. As we said, the number 21 team in the country. What a job Chris Norris has done. Dangerous shot, but not on frame. Is sliding across there was number nine, Ryan Flesh. As Flesh comes into the game with one assist on the season. Yeah, we have another look at this. Is it just a you know, decent first touch there? He obviously did not get a hold of that shot because uh, he had the time. To get the but, you know, like I said, they're going at the wide backs for James Madison with what I think is part of the strength of William Mary as their wide players. And of course, as you said, SK and West in the center who have scored 11 of the 21 goals for William and Mary this year. 
You're watching a college soccer special right here on NSCAA TV. We're glad you're with us. Also on Friday night from PPL Park, we'll have Army and Navy as well. Rob Kehoe's done a phenomenal job putting together the schedule on this newly minted NSCAA TV. We thank you for being with us all season long. And, of course, on Tuesdays, the college soccer highlights and the show as well is back to live action here, breaking down all of college soccer. Quite an exciting time to be breaking it down because the uh, in, the conference tournaments are all starting up this next week. And then, of course, people trying to get into the 48-team field for the NCAA Perez tournament. will try to run it down. Sorry, Keith. No and problem. Perez somehow was able to get to it before it crossed the end line, but headed out of there, kicked out of there, rather, though, by James Madison. He's faster than I thought. I would have stopped talking. <laughs> I didn't expect him to get to it either, Keith. Well said. Here's Patel. The left back comes forward, and Patel will clean it up and then patiently play it back here to Will Smith. Will Smith, number 14, quite the golfer, by the way. Actually carded a 146 at the U.S. Amateur Golf Championships a few years back. Pretty talented is Will Smith, whose dad played hockey for Boston College and got a sniff with the Chicago Blackhawks. Patel. One back by the Dukes as they'll bring it all the way back here to Mike Whitaker. He'll switch it here now to Bajarki Adelsteinsen from Iceland. One for one on that one, Keith. You're good with that. I'll, I'll let you continue with that name. <laughs> Number 29. <laughs> <laughs> Number 29. But uh, actually, here we talked about the injuries that James Madison suffered, and he was one of the early injuries. It was a game that I was watching at Georgetown, and it was 0-0 going into overtime, and, and he had been playing a fantastic game and really just winning everything. Probably the best player on the field that day. He gets injured a few minutes into the overtime period, and sure enough, within a minute, Georgetown goes right at that spot and scores to win that game. Josh West trying to combine up top. And cleared out of there now by William and Mary. First ball was won by James Madison. Second ball won by William and Mary. And the second ball will be critical here as William and Mary builds its attack. Well, it, it's critical here. It's critical any time. And, and people think about, you know, they were saying you've got to win this first ball. But wherever the second ball goes, and we'll see right now, that determines possession. So finding those players around, as you see Marcus Luster getting that one, you know, is really the key. And the balls that go in the air, it's not that first one. It's the second one for sure, Dean. Tracking all the way back is Ryan Flesh. Very patient right now. Josh West, one of the two center forwards, comes all the way back. And now Will Smith will try to bang one long. They were patient. They switched it. And, boy, he had all kinds of time back there, Correll Monroe. And it'll go off of his head. They'll throw in now for the home team, William and Mary. Patel came forward. He wanted it. Now he'll get it. Bashan Patel. A senior from McLean, Virginia, was part of the CAA All-Rookie team back in 2010. It's been a nice career for Patel. A four-year starter at the left back, and one of these guys that gets forward well. He's also good at picking off passes and actually starting the attacks from the back. Perry's pass intercepted by the Dukes, and here come the Dukes. Josh Grant is fouled, and now a free kick opportunity for the team in purple. About 13 minutes in here as you take a look here. Is this a foul, Keith? I tell you what, I would not agree with that call. <laughs> I see, I, 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 I mean, he touched him, but he certainly didn't push him or stop him or anything like that. And gives Adam Bastidas a chance to put the ball in for James Madison. Bastidas, Luster, a lot of these players. Keith Thabatsik has coached in some way, and they turned out okay. Here's Bastidas on the right foot, sent in. Dangerous opportunity by James Madison. Pretty good ball there, finding the head of Jonathan Barden. Off of their time. Yeah, and have another look. It really was a good, a good ball because the keeper can't come for that. He gets in, the, in front of that to have that flick on, you know, with, with a decent chance. I mean, you get that on to the far post might be, you know, might have been a better thing to do, but as you said, Adam Bestidas and Marcus Luster, Jackson SK, and then we'll see off the best the bench, Jeff Bumbells from William Mary, all had on ODP in the region. And you sounded surprised that they turned out well, Dean. No, uh, no, I appreciate I, that. I, you know, <laughs> everybody knows you're a fantastic coach. Twenty plus years at Georgetown, doing it there without scholarships as well. Keep the bats that you've been involved with the ODP. So 
one of the best coaches out there, and you knew that's what I meant. Jonathan Barden there. By the way, that was Josh Grant on that last header opportunity. Threading the needle right down the middle is West. And a heavy touch there. And good job by James Madison to handle the counterattack. And well, how about Chris Norris's team just trying to go over the top? Nice pass. Yeah, and he, he had the lane there to play the ball through. And, and, and even though they didn't get it, I think William May should have done a better job keeping James Madison in there. Jackson SK a little slow in getting to his defensive position to keep the, the back four for James Madison being able to play it out. And, you know, they have it back right now. But when you do put that in there, you may as well send a lot of people in to try to keep the ball in that final third. Flesh missed, hit that one. I will give SK credit, though, for tracking all the way back to get the ball back for William and Mary. Good job defending, and you like to see that. A lot of times the forward makes a bad run. They'll sit and mope about it, but he came back and helped out. Yeah, he, he came back. And what, I, what I would say to him if I was coaching him is that if, if you had actually put the pressure on earlier, you wouldn't have to do that run, <laughs> you know, <laughs> to come back. But it, it was credit to, to Jackson, which was not his forte as he was a youth in the ODP uh, tracking back and defending. And you'll see when the ball gets to his feet what his forte is. as an absolutely tremendous feed and dribbler. Look forward to... A wonderful halftime piece here on Al Albert and John Daly. Stick with us here on NSCA TV. And super halftime program put together by George Krieger and his crew here at William & Mary. What a fantastic day it's been here in Williamsburg, Virginia. Well, I'll tell you what, William & Mary never stops running. How about that run from Chris Dunn right there? The yeah. right back. Yeah, I mean, they do it, like we said, they're playing at home. They want to get this pressure on. They really want to get an early goal. It's 15 minutes in. James Madison's going to be happy, you know, right now that there is an early goal. Certainly one of their keys was to be able to get out there and compete and uh, be competitive the whole season. Because after a disappointing season, you know, as we see the replay, after a disappointing season, you want to get from your team is they go out and compete, you know, regardless, and they can leave everything on the field. William and & Mary and James Madison are one of the CAA's oldest rivalries, and tonight's meeting is the 49th meeting between the two schools. James Madison holds a slight 18-22-8 advantage in the all-time series. A season ago, James Madison blanked the Tribe one to nothing in Harrisonburg as Carell Monroe scored for JMU while Kyle Morton made five saves to earn the shutout. That's pretty tight. In 49 contests, 18 20 or 18 22 and 8 well that's about as even as you're going to get it's it certainly is and and it actually made me think of the one thing with james madison while the record is is not good this year six nine and one you know dean out of those nine losses eight of them by one goal and, and, you, and you talk about how big that difference it is when you have key players injured or, or out for winning those one goal games well and they're legitimate games as well georgetown one goal loss Furman one goal loss delaware and unc wilmington all legitimate squads there. They only lose by one goal as they are. Even with all those injuries and Dr. Tom Martin telling him it's been as tough a season as he's had, they've been that close, Keith well said. No score here. At the Albert Daly Field. It was so fun talking to Al Albert before the game as the developments of this unbelievable facility, including now this beautiful press box that they used to play. There'd be a circus going on over there. There's a <laughs> mental institute where people would walk over and start coaching the team. I mean, Al Albert, talk about a great storyteller between him and John Daly. I tell you what, you just sit down and enjoy it as you look at this foul right here. Yeah, exactly. Adam Bastida's uh, turning and getting fouled by Marcus Luster. He kind of lost his balance. Both members of Region 1 Olympic Development Program. And uh, but you're right, you know, you, so you said there was a institution next door coaching and everything. <laughs> was it them coaching or was that where coaches went? <laughs> I'll plead the fifth on that one. Go. Marcus Luster, the junior, he also made the CAA All-Rookie Team back in 2011, played at Great Bridge High School, did Luster. And it's Luster who will leave it in the back here now for Will Smith. Here's Chris Dunn. We saw the run he made earlier. Chris Dunn wearing the eight jersey. Luster showed for a minute. Now flashing all the way back here is Jackson SK. And they'll leave it for Chris Perez. And that final pass goes wanting right here now. Keith the Batsnik is inside the 18's been the issue here. It has been the issue. I think one of the things they're trying to play everybody through and 
I think they need to change that up a little bit, find some people's feet once in a while. And, you know, Josh West, a pretty good player to turn and get it. But certainly Jackson SK, you know, his feet. And as we see it right there, I see him laying that ball off. And if he can do that same thing 20 yards upfield, they'll be in much better shape. Coming the other way again, here is William and Mary. Dropped about 30 yards out, top of the 18. Trying to find his way there was Josh West. And Luster comes crashing in. It'll go off of Luster and a free kick. So we stay at 0-0 zero, zero at the <laughs> six-minute mark right now. However, College of Charleston is hosting UNC Wilmington. Wilmington scoring that goal, Dean. And that's one of the things you can do and get some help. Well, if UNC Wilmington can win it and Drexel loses or ties, it'll be UNC Wilmington that has that number one seed. And, of course, any of those scores that favor either UNC Wilmington or Drexel affect William and Mary in their quest to win the CAA number one seed. So that score line not going to make the Tribe too happy. No, it wasn't. Of course, they, you know, well, that's a – Poor mistake by Jackson SK. He doesn't do that very often. You know, that, that's one of the things, though, is you have to just sit there and just focus on your game. And, you know, and every scores, and we see the replay of Jackson just, I uh, don't know what he was doing. I think he was just trying to bend that ball hard. Uh, but giving up a goal kick. And I think it's one of the exciting things about the, the CAA tonight is that all, the, all three games have kicked off at the same time. Second half, we'll visit with the 18-year athletic director of William & Mary, Terry Driscoll, the former NBA star, Hall of Famer at Boston College. Can't wait to talk to Terry Driscoll. Grew up a Detroit Pistons fan. Visit the official NSCAA College Scoreboard at TopDrawerSoccer.com for all of your college score needs. Along with the most up-to-date scores, TopDrawerSoccer.com provides box scores, match, team, player stats, video highlights, and game recaps of all the action around the country. James Madison... I'm just going to say, Dino James Madison. Actually, you think while you know they've only had the one chance towards uh, towards goal, that they, they that they still have to feel okay that you know they certainly haven't been on their heels the whole time. Uh, early William and Mary going at them, attacking them from the left and from the right side, getting a corner kick, then getting the free kick. They, now, you know, now I think at least James Madison, the players out there, feeling a little bit of belief in the competing, and they got a bit of a soft foul call there, I think. One back here now by William and Mary. As it falls to Ryan Flesh. Flesh taken down. This time, no whistle. We've seen whistles for less as Jonathan Barden will send it out the other way. It'll fall to Tom Fui. Fui looks up top, finds the feet here of Josh Grant. And it'll be played back here now. And William and Mary goalkeeper Mac Phillips right back to Mac Phillips. He sent it out and it came right back where it came from. <laughs> yes. You know, make, keep, keeping himself honest, I guess. He hasn't really had much going, and we see this as it, it's thrown out. And James Madison uh, decides to try to put that right back in. And why not? Twenty-two minutes, forty seconds left here in the first half. No score at Albert Daly Field. Inside Martin Family Stadium and the Martin Family, a key reason for this beautiful press box as well. Now the support that people have for William and Mary is, is obvious with all the facilities that they have around. And you know, as we said, the, the first capital city of the United States, and it's a beautiful place to be down at. And James Madison. Boots it long inside the box. Patel comes over to try to clean it up. They'll say it goes off of the Dukes and it'll come back to the Tribe. Speaking of the Tribe, how great is it to see the Tribal Fever as you take a look at this replay? Yeah, and again, the ball head over, it's just uh, obviously way too deep a, a ball going in, but they were hoping to be able to head that ball back. The ball served into James Madison's, uh, uh, the, the player that you like to pronounce the name, but number 29. <laughs> 
<laughs> g g give me a hint there, Dean. I I'll I do it. Vajarki Adelsteinson. Exactly. You got it right. Vajarki Adelsteinson. <laughs> <laughs> Keith the Batsnick. You gotta love him. Here comes the tribe. Hard tackle from behind by James Madison. Showing us why Dr. Tom Martin is still so proud of this team despite a tough season with just the six wins. James Madison looking for more. Here's a shot and it'll deflect off and come back the other way. And that one looks like looked like it had eyes for side netting. Yeah, it, it certainly had a chance uh, for, for two reasons. Uh, you might have got there. <laughs> Well, we have another look at this. Is this Tom Foy, the sophomore from England, and it gets blocked. He's got only one goal on the year, but that was certainly a, a decent idea to try to bend that around. Good look now at Mac Phillips. Last time Mac Phillips took a goal kick, it came right back to him. <laughs> so let's see if Phillips can clear the midfield stripe. One in the middle again by Marcus Luster, who that's his job, right, Keith, to win those balls and connect the back line with the front line? Absolutely. He sits right in front of those two central defenders, and he'll sit there pretty much the whole night, although I can tell you he has some good attacking skills as well. But in this setup, he does not need to use them, and, and he will win it and get it to the best guy he can get it to. And it's Just such an honest player. It gives everything he's got every single minute of the game. And, you know, he played as center back for us and in that position for us with the region ODP and some major tournaments overseas. Great ball from Will Smith right at the top of the 18. The goalkeeper is way off his line. Now he'll track back. Cleared out of there by James Madison and played up top to the head of Grant. Grant on the turn, pushed from behind by Smith, and it was Smith who served that fantastic ball to the top of the 18, Keith. Yeah, you know, he, again, they've been probing with some of these balls, trying to get, you know, in behind see this ball right here as, uh, as the goalkeeper New City came out actually without getting the ball and he's fortunate his defender was able to head that ball away because he as they say went fishing and didn't get anything. Good touch here now by William and Mary the tribe trying to spring it left that's the pass that has gone missing. It, it is and, and so there's no reason for that pass to go in the air anyway so there's not any space for that ball to go in behind uh, they just need to swing that goes we look at it again is on the ball and maybe Jackson just goes straight at the defender because a couple another five yards and he could take a shot himself it kind of complicates what could have been a fairly simple play new city with the goal kick for James Madison second ball one is they'll try to spring it down the left side looking for the feet here of Tom Fui. And it'll be knocked out of bounds. It'll be Fui with the throw in. He plays it quickly in, trying to find Josh Grant. Grant pushed off the ball to fall back now to Tyler Durbin, the left back. Durbin with his left foot off of William and Mary is closing down in there was Chris Perez. It'll be a throw in again for the Dukes. 18 minutes and change left here in the first half. It's William and Mary zero. James Madison zero right here on NSCAA TV. Long throw in here now for Durbin. Durbin inside the 18, headed out. It'll fall to the feet of Josh West. He'll play it back. Hammered to the ground was Chris Perez, and that could be a yellow card as Perez was taken down violently there, and indeed a yellow card going to number 11, Josh Grant. Yeah, and, and, a, and a fair yellow for sure. You know, he, he, Josh Grant knew it right away, put his hand up, and you know, said, you know, my, my bad on that one. One of the things, though, is bringing that ball back is William Mary actually, as the ball came out, had it in not too bad a position to, to go forward, but... Now Mac Phillips way outside the 18. We'll take it as you take a look at the man who just got a yellow card, Josh Grant, number 11. And Phillips having trouble with distribution out of the back right now for Chris Norris. Of course, William and Mary has had some fantastic players come through this program and then They've also had John Stewart as well, <laughs> Keith the Batsnick, yes. and John Stewart's been involved in some NSCA functions. And of course, when Al Albert is inducted into the Hall of Fame, one of the right. funniest 
introductory speeches you're ever going to find John Stewart. I mean, the man is epically funny. Yeah, yeah he was good. He wasn't a bad soccer player either, but uh, he, he'll be known better for his, for his comedy. You know, but uh, again, a William and Mary grad who's, who's gone on to do quite well. Nice, calm touch out of the back by Idol Stinson until he'll dribble it too long. It'll be taken away here now by SK, number 24. As they were trying to give and go there, West and Perez not able to combine, Key. No, and, and a miscommunication there. I think he thought SK was going to continue to run and, you know, whether he was going to flick the ball or leave it. And, and again, I think some of the times they get into this final third, they're just you know, complicating things a little bit. They just settle down and play, play something simpler. They've got enough skill up there to be able to get in behind James Madison. Neither team has gone to their bench yet here and late in the season because of injuries and also some yellow card accumulation. The depth on both teams not quite there, Keith. Yeah, and in fact, uh, James Madison, you know, as depleted as they are, is also now missing Daniel Roper, a sophomore from Germany who has three of their goals. And he's sitting out on his fifth card of the year, so that's a one-game suspension and just happens to be the final game of the season. Probably at this stage, uh, Tom Martin's happier with that than being the opening game of next season. Luster tracks back, gets a piece of it. And he is nicked as well. And another whistle here. Quite a few fouls here in the first half. Yeah, fouls without this being a rough game, but by any stretch of the imagination, and certainly a couple fouls that, that I thought were fairly soft calls. But there, there's what we need to see more, just the layoffs and then go from there. SK will drop it out to Albiston. Albiston now back to SK. James Madison gets stuck in just enough to win it back, and now they can try to counter. Tracking back there, though, was Dunn, the right back, who likes to come forward, able to just knock that play up a little bit. A little bit sloppy here now. Can't get by Will Smith as Smith plays it cleanly here to Dunn. Dunn over to Luster. As Luster turns, he runs right into Jonathan Barden, but clean, plain, played cleanly now. Easy for me to say by Chris Perez. Now Luster... <laughs> Back over again to Dunn. Dunn, cross midfield. Gets it out wide to Albiston. Good combination play here now by the Tribe. Dunn, very calm here. Back to Luster. Patel will spring it out wide left. It'll fall here now to the feet again of Flesh. Back inside, one bounce and no problem for Colin New City. And, and, and once again, those passes that come in like that are just so difficult. I mean, they have to pretty much go right to the head. And really, he should be trying to find that, find the feet. If he finds his feet going in there, he's got a chance of you know turning the defender. And of course, Dean, the defender has to be a lot more careful in the 18 if the ball's at his opponent's feet. A lot of this renovation started in 2004 with the completion of the Albert Daly Field. And in a short time, this place has been a haven for victories for William & Mary. Coming into the season, they were 46-22 and 11 on this field, Keith. Yeah, it's, it's needless to say, everyone loves playing at home. And when you have a facility like this, it makes it even better. The fan support that they have that we're seeing out here tonight as well always helps. And they're just a tradition. William & Mary has, has quite a tradition, men's and women's program. And, you know, a, a very good youth community in the area also that supports them. New City. Both teams looking to make some substitutes here. Tom Martin, who played at Davis and Elkins with two legendary figures in U.S. soccer, Hank Steinbrecher, the longtime Secretary General, and Bill Nuttall, the general manager of the 1994 U.S. World Cup team. And in fact, they now play on the William Nuttall Memorial Stadium. They call it the Nut after raising more than $600,000 as part of a fundraiser that Dr. Tom Martin was involved in. Yeah, and, and, and those are legends of the game that you, just, that you just said, and Tom Martin being one of them, and Hank Steinbrecher doing so much for, uh, for U.S. soccer as the gen general secretary. We'd like to thank Choice Hotels, the official hotel sponsor of the NSCAA. Wherever the game takes you, Choice Hotels makes getting there easy. Visit Choice Sports Travel to book your hotel today. And James Madison like to book a goal here on the road. They've had a few opportunities inside the 18. A header by Josh Grant, not on target. Probably the best opportunity as it falls to Bastidas. 
That's Mashinsky, Steven Mashinsky number 14 as he tucks back in the middle, remember that name, as Tyler Durbin read there by Luster. Luster can counter, it's three on four at the moment. Luster with one man to beat, not able to do it, stepping up just in time, Daniel Simpson as Simpson just pretty much sits right in the midfield to do that kind of work. He did, and, and he read Luster well. Luster actually, I thought, made a decent decision because both his forwards ran into the same spot, Jackson SK and Josh West, and really gave Luster only one option. This is trouble, but coming out in the nick of time is the goalkeeper, Mac Phillips, as it was Dunn who tracked back to get his head on it, but with 11 minutes and 45 seconds left here in the first half, still no score. As we are in Williamsburg, Virginia, on the campus of William and Mary, and what a beautiful campus indeed. Here's Luster. Luster will switch it to Patel. Patel, the senior with the bright colored boots. Perez with the right foot, driven in, deflected off. It's dangerous, it'll fall back, and taking a swing at it is Josh West, but can't get it on frame. No, and again, not a bad try as we see this again as the ball comes in and West just there. In fact, interestingly, his defender dropped off him enough that West probably should have that ball down, but he had no idea. Fans getting involved as they're throwing T-shirts into the crowd here on what looks to be a pretty full house here at William & Mary. What a great crowd here on... A Wednesday night, Keith the Batsnick. Yeah, well, they're, they're all out, of, but a perfect Wednesday night. November 6th, this could be anything. We see the crowd, and you know, uh, right there in the main stands and across the field from us as well. And with, with a game on the line, I mean, you would hope, you would hope they'd be out here with the, the possibility of first place in the CAA on the line and then hosting the tournament if, the, if that happens. Well, playing a key role in the crowd as well. Al Albert didn't just sail off into the sunset. He has been involved. He's part of the athletic administration here. He continues to raise all kinds of dollars for this wonderful university as well. He's very much involved. When you look at him, he looks like he could coach 50 more years, in fact. Yeah, and I, and I think it was a tough decision for Al to, to stop coach. I remember talking to him about it quite a bit at the time. And, you know, I think uh, it was when his, his son was basically basically finishing up. That's right. I was just told here. Shot here by William and Mary right at the top of the box. Dialing one up there is number 16, Chris Albertson. It'll be a corner kick for the drive. Yeah, we have a look at uh, Chris's shot here. He takes that ball down well, and it just got deflected slightly off the back of the James Madison uh, defender for another corner kick. I believe the second corner kick now for William and Mary. Yeah, well, Albert, the Associate Director of Development is his official title, but just call him the all-around tribe ambassador. Patel, all the way across, drops on the opposite side of the 18. It'll be a now a corner kick from the opposite side. So we have a little bit, a little bit more sustained pressure from William Mary right now, and see if they can take van advantage of having these restarts and keep the ball in if they don't. Corner kick. Corner kick for William and Mary. Knocked out of there. And, uh, that was uh, almost a dangerous back pass by James Madison and being hunted down up top. Right side here for William and Mary. Luster will get it out to Patel. Patel trying to play it into space. And that, that forward for William and Mary chasing after these balls who just came in uh, nice and fresh, Zach Montebell, a senior for William and Mary. And, you know, I think right now trying to get in there with a little bit, you know, they've been playing a lot of these direct balls. And he, he's come in for uh, Jackson SK and there's a two somewhat similar players up top with him, you know, and West. But certainly two players that will stretch the James Madison defense if they sleep at all. The fall right to New City. And 
And this one will go out of bounds. Seven minutes and 20 seconds left here in the first half. Stick around at halftime. A wonderful piece narrated mostly by Chris Norris as well, the fine head coach, talking about the legacy of Al Albert and John Daly. And then Wes Kempton catches up with both coaches on the field. The shot here from distance, about 20 yards out. Elbiston again cranks one up. Yeah, and he, and he came in from the right side, cutting into the left for the first time tonight and getting off a very good shot. And he's got three goals on the year, only six assists though. And he's one of those dangerous wide players that are gonna be creating problems for William Mary right from the beginning. He was one of the guys that, that caught, got the, uh, the free kick. Just like that, the other way, Ryan Perry feels the pressure and now it'll be a corner kick for Dr. Tom Martin's team as they go to the bench. The big man, Boyd Reed, at number nine, the junior from Canada, will come into the game. So Reed, number nine, hard to miss Reed. Six foot three, 190 pounds. And he'll sit right in front of Mac Phillips as James Madison with the corner kick. Six minutes left in the first half. Lofting ball, it's still loose. It fell there. Idle Stinson was not able to take a shot at it. And, and you know the thing is, Idle Stenson was right there and open. He did not expect that ball to go right through. Have a look at this. Bastidas plays a really good ball, and he's just standing there. He's, he's got flat-footed, and really, if he just expected that ball to come, he would have been on top of it. What a lesson that is. You know, if you always expect the ball to come, you got a chance. And, you know, why are you reacting to something that hasn't happened? And, 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 and especially a guy with that size. I mean, I would, I would have knocked his own team, my own teammate <laughs> over if I, if I had that size, which, of course, I would never have, have never experienced. But, <laughs> you know, but, uh, but, but seriously, that was, a, that was truly the best chance they've had that wasn't, abs in the end, wasn't even taken. Well, flat-footed, you said it best, Keith the Bats, like exactly yeah. what he was. It was like he didn't expect it to be there, and there he stood, looked at the ball, and the brain to the feet didn't quite work. Rob Kehoe would have a lesson about energy somewhere in all of that uh, as well. <laughs> Patel. One back by the big man, Reed, and he goes down. And now a little pushing and shoving here. The referee will come over to try to get it settled down. Reed went down. Let's see if they issue any cards right now. Talk to him a little bit. Let's see if Reed... Yeah, he definitely got fouled. Yeah, yeah, hit me. He grabbed him, and and that there was no need for West. He got so far to go, <laughs> right there with a lot of defenders, and a little fortunate he didn't get he didn't get a card there because he did just put his arm out and grab him. I, I have a feeling if that was inside the final third, that certainly would have got a card. Boy, Mac Phillips decided to let that one go out of bounds. I'm not sure why either way because he could have just no grab that. Yeah. yeah, and then you yeah. can take it out to the 18. I don't get that. Yeah. Corner kick. Another one here for the Dukes. Far side. Phillips will punch it out with authority. Well done by the goalkeeper as he came out a little bit in no man's land, but he made sure. That that, he, that got out, yes. He got a control. Of the He's not the goalkeeper. Again, having a look at that, but he did get out. The timing was perfect. Technique. Ball out with two hands. Two fists. Tough touch here coming forward by James Madison. Heavy from Jonathan Barden. And now William and Mary will try to counter. They'll look up. Ooh, and clip from behind. And he'll get booked for that. Yeah, he will definitely get a yellow. So a yellow card issued. Tactical foul by Idle Stenson, but not with a, a lot of etiquette. No, and, and again, why do that all the way back there? need for it. Here's the central defender that has to now be pretty careful the rest of the game. Well said, Keith. Mentioned we're at Albert Daly Field. Of course, the women's coach, John Daly, and we certainly want to thank Emery Camper, our stage manager, who also plays for John Daly. You, feel, you get the feeling it's a family affair here in Williamsburg. It's been a lot of fun here, Keith. Well, well, well it is, and, and of course, uh, you know, she's done a, a fantastic job for us in here, but I think it's because she wants some stories about her coach, John Daly, and I'm waiting. I, I will give a story every, you know, I, there's a price for it, but you will get your stories about John Daly, that's for sure. They're all short stories, though. <laughs> Except when he tells them. Here comes James Madison on the run here, Barden. Will Smith steps up just in time. Three minutes left here in the first half. 
Played back in the middle. William and Mary trying to keep possession. That's what they're doing, but except in the final 18. And we'll see if Coach Chris Norris will make some adjustments as that on that as well. Played up top here, Josh West. As he tries to find the feet of Zachary Matabel. Coming the other way, here comes James Madison. Tom Fui, the left back. Fui tucks inside, looking for a purple jersey. He'll drop it neatly to Grant. Grant now will square it back. Played to Adam Bastidas, now out wide, far right. Here comes James Madison, played into the big man, Reed. Reed with Patel sliding in, and two minutes and 15 seconds left in the first half. Another goal for James Madison. Yeah, and, and again, Reed kind of screening that ball fairly well, and you know, trying to trying to get the ball across. And James Madison, as we've seen in the last 10-15 uh, minutes, having a bit more of the play up in this end. Eight shots right now for the Tribe, five for the Dukes, but another corner kick for James Madison. That's three corner kicks here in the last three minutes. Bastidas with that right foot. Well, that time he got up for it and went straight for it. You know, he, he Idle did, stints. Yeah, Adel Stenson. Have another look. Bastidas has hit a couple very good corner kicks in there. Adel Stenson up, couldn't turn his hips to face the goal. You know, he had uh, the defenders on him. And, uh, you know, a pressure on him, just enough body contact to make it difficult to have a clean header. Patel wins the second ball. They'll go out of bounds. Reed came in there with the sliding tackle. We have 60 seconds left exactly here in the first half. Still no score. And we'll get you up to date at halftime as well on those other key matchups in the Colonial Athletic Association. Drexel, if they win, they're the number one seed and they claim the CAA title. The pilots track back, here's Durbin. So to add to that, uh, Dean uh, win the title for the second year in a row, and that's under Doug Hess in just his fourth year at Drexel. First time ever in the NSA tournament last year, they lost in their first round to, uh, their first game to Brown. Pat Laughlin's team. Fifteen seconds remaining. Wes Kempton will visit with Dr. Tom Martin here at the end of the first half. Five seconds left here. William American crank one. It's deflected off. It would be a corner kick if we had time, but we don't. But the Tribe with one last shot after 45. It's William and Mary zero, James Madison zero. Yeah, and I'd have to say that it's James Madison that's going to be the happiest with this. William and Mary went out at them right at the beginning, trying to create some chances early, trying to take advantage of being at home, but they were not able to. And James Madison getting some of their chances late in this half. So it's halftime here at Albert Daly Field. No score here between the Tribe and James Madison. No, there's no score here. It, you know, we, we saw only a couple shots on target. It was, you know, and that we had the eight, uh, you know, eight shots or five, eight or nine shots and five shots going on. But if you think about that, Dean, how many saves were there? There's really maybe only one or two saves in that game yeah, in, in the first half. And uh, we, we looked at it. William and Mary, if they can become simple up front in the final third, they'll do well. Let's go down to Wes Kempton, who's standing by with the James Madison head coach. I'm here with Coach Tom Martin. Coach, a scoreless first half. You had a lot of great opportunities. What went right for you guys out there? Well, we chose to defend a little bit deeper and uh, try to take away some of the space in the midfield, win the ball, and try to catch him on the break. And every time we got the ball forward, we, we didn't get enough numbers in support. But we we're very leery of uh, their transition attack. They're very quick. They win the ball. They don't mess around. If they can't combine right away, they go forward. What we have to make sure we do is clog up the middle of the field a little bit more and keep our numbers good at the back so not to get beat on that break. What do you plan to tell your team at the half to make sure that they come out strong in the next? Well, we, we got to remind them that now it's a 45-minute game. You know, we, we, goal one was accomplished against William & Mary. Now we got to put goal two together. Great. Thank you, Coach. Good luck. Uh -huh. Take a look here now at the Disney Soccer 
player of the week from my own Franklin Castellanos. Castellanos scored three goals for six points in two competitions against St. Peter's and Canisius. And Castellano moves into sole possession of second all-time in points at Iona. He is your NSCA Disney Soccer Player of the Week. Take a look now here at the NSCAA Continental Tire Top 10. And Bobby Clark, who was on this week's NSCAA Highlights and Review show, they beat Michigan State 2 to nothing yesterday. Yeah, and if you look at the top four, the top four hasn't changed just the order has changed. Now you have Notre Dame followed by UCLA, Jorge Salcedo's team making a good run at the end. Bobby Clark's son, Jamie, leading Washington into in a great season. And Cal, who had been number one for weeks on end, drops to number four. As we said, going down, Maryland staying up there. UMBC having, continuing having a great year. Louisville, who we had on the air only a few weeks ago. Georgetown drops a few to number eight. Akron back up there. And Marquette, another Big East team, rounds out the top ten. Your top ten. <laughs> by Continental Tire. Your halftime score from Albert Daly Field here on the campus of William & Mary. It's the Tribe Zero and James Madison Zero, and you're watching NSCAA TV. In Virginia, there is a place where remarkable people have come for centuries to discover and create. Inspiring a nation since 1693. Continental Tires, the presenting sponsor of College Soccer Night on NSCAA TV. The broadcast of this match is authorized by the National Soccer Coaches Association of America. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of any image, sound, account, or description without the express written permission of the NSCAA is strictly prohibited. Tonight's match was produced for the NSCAA by Apparent Gravity Media. Welcome back here to Albert Daly Field. The mascot having some fun here is the Tribe and James Madison. They played 49 times, no score at the half. Dean Link along with Keith Tabatsik. Let's take a look at the first half highlights. Well, again, we talked about this being a rivalry, Dean. It doesn't matter what you have in terms of the record. It's going to be a hard-fought game, and it's certainly what we saw at the half. We see the lineup right beforehand, and we know that William and Mary going into this game, having the great crowd behind them. Tribal in. fever. Yep. And the tribal fever was trying to get something out of the tribe early, and this was uh, this was the foul early on that led to the, one of the free kicks. As Adam Bastidas uh, winning the ball back, a bit of physical play actually going on, and, 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 and it continued. Marcus Luster with that hard tackle in there, but a clean tackle. And again at midfield, the, the both teams fighting for the ball, and Adam Bastidas doing a great job, but Marcus Luster this time knocking him down, and the referee, Sean Pepperman, obviously right on top of that one. And this is one we saw later, you know, late in the half, where you know they got a little bit of shoving match, you know, not not much going on. Uh, Sean Pepperman right in on top of that, and now this ball coming in at the end with some of the chances. Oh, that was I'm sorry, early in the early in the half, some of the chances that we had coming from James Madison on these crosses coming in, and they haven't missed by much on a couple of them, but really nothing yet on target for 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 them. Now here's the shot they tried to get this ball uh, punched around the goalkeeper. And then it was the same kind of going the other way where James, where William and Mary also having some chances during the course of the game. And we talked about this one again, again the rough play, but it was, no, it was pretty easy for goalkeeper Mac Phillips right there. And now we look at, this was one of the few shots on target. And, and another shot here, this ball played in, he has plenty of time to try to get off a decent shot, but kind of, kind of rushes that a little bit for William and Mary. This was kind of like what we saw the whole time. A lot of these balls being played in without anything very specific coming off of it for William and Mary. And once again, another ball played in there. But this time, it's Josh West actually getting on the end of that ball, trying to have the half-turned volley. He might have had a little bit more time to bring it down. And then, obviously, right towards the end, we have the shot by Chris Albertson that just goes over as time runs out in this game. Good work there by Brian Krieger yep. covering every shot. Yes. <laughs> Here's we take a look at the first half stats. A lot of green and yellow in the crowd here as well. And your first half stats as you break it down here, the shots, William & Mary had nine, James Madison six. Corner kicks, James Madison three to William & Mary two. 
And the fouls, felt like there were more fouls than this. Six fouls for William & Mary, four for James Madison. No, exactly. And then I talked about the fact that while there was all those shots, there weren't many saves, and really only uh, two saves for James Madison and one for William & Mary. Here at halftime in Williamsburg, Virginia, we talk about the legendary status of Al Albert and John Daly. Let's take a look, as narrated by the head coach of William & Mary, Chris Norris. When you think about William & Mary soccer, you immediately think of the tremendous tradition that has been established by John Daly and Al Albert, two luminaries of the college game. While John continues to build on his remarkable resume, he has guided the tribe to 20 NCAA tournament appearances, an NCAA record 32 consecutive winning seasons, won 10 CAA championships, and garnered seven regional coach of the year awards. In addition, He's guided 31 players to All-America honors, including two National Players of the Year in Megan McCarthy and four-time All-American Natalie Neaton. Al left the sidelines of William & Mary soccer as one of the most accomplished coaches in Division I history. His 401 wins ranks him eighth all-time in NCAA Division I. He guided the tribe to 29 consecutive winning seasons, the fourth longest streak in NCAA Division I history. He took the team to 12 NCAA tournaments, won six Colonial Athletic Association championships and was named the Regional Coach of the Year four times. In addition, he had numerous players drafted into MLS, including Aiden Brown, Wade Barrett, and Steve Jolly, who all went on to have terrific professional careers. And he probably takes a little bit more credit than he deserves for influencing the career of our most famous alum, John Stewart. I had the great privilege to have played for Al, uh, to have, have worked with him as an assistant coach, and to have, have succeeded him as the head coach at William & Mary. Um, my goal in taking over the program was to stand on the shoulder of, of a giant and to continue the tremendous tradition that uh, we've established with William & Mary soccer. I believe that we have the support, the resources, and that we create a soccer environment that enables us to not only build on the great traditions of winning conference championships and participating in NCAA tournaments, but to hopefully someday compete for an NCAA championship and to participate in Final Fours on a consistent basis. But the greatest thing about our program is that we do it while adhering to the ideal of the student athlete. When you come to William & Mary and you're part of the William & Mary soccer family, you have an opportunity to get a tremendous education in addition to a great soccer experience. One of our greatest resources is Albert Daly Field at Martin Family Stadium. Our student athletes treasure the opportunity every time to represent the tribe at this world-class facility. It truly is a monument to the tremendous support that we receive from the William & Mary Athletic family. John and Al have not only left a remarkable legacy here at William & Mary, but have also been tremendous servants to the game of soccer on a national scale. We are truly lucky to have them in our tribe soccer family. We welcome you back to halftime between James Madison and the College of William & Mary and on to Albert Daly Field, where I'm joined by the namesakes, Al Albert and John Daly. And John, I'll start with you. You've been at the helm for 27 years, the women's soccer program, the last decade of which on this field. Is there any extra pressure to playing on a field that bears your name? No, not really. In fact, uh, I always mention to people that the short grass at one end of the field is named after me. That's my part. And the long grass at the other end, that's Al's part. No pressure whatsoever. Uh, Al, you've had a huge part in this program, length of the grass aside. Tell me about when you took over the helm, what realistic expectations or hopes did you have for this program? We were just trying to win games and we had no championships at that time. Um, it's just phenomenal to stand here in this facility and think that we used to play behind us on an open field. Certainly a lot of changes, but one thing that hasn't changed is the consistent success of women's soccer here at the college. What has been the key to your prolonged success here? Recruiting, it's the lifeblood of any program. We have a wonderful school, tremendous academics. We now have a beautiful stadium field, and it just makes recruiting that much easier these days. Al, recruiting has been uh, something that you are obviously very good at, bringing a great deal of talent and success here to Williamsburg, but what impact did you have on the game beyond this city and this institution? Well, I, I really feel like John and I have had an impact on the community and the state with our camps and with the local soccer club. And we've also been very involved in National Soccer Coaches Association of America's officers. So we just want to grow the game and give back. 
John, last question here. You've got a big game coming up this weekend. You're the number two seed going into the conference tournament. What are your expectations? Uh, my expectations are to give it our best shot to try and win our 11th conference championship. I'm optimistic. I've got space on my ring for one more two digits, so I'm looking forward to it. Well, all the best of luck, gentlemen. I thank you for your time. It's been my honor. We'll be back after this break. The broadcast of this match is authorized by the National Soccer Coaches Association of America. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of any image, sound, account, or description without the express written permission of the NSCAA is strictly prohibited. Tonight's match was produced for the NSCAA by Apparent Gravity Media. Halftime here, the Tribal Fever, the Pep Band are loving it as well. A Wednesday night matchup on NSCAA TV. we got more games coming up. Not listed there. Friday night, Army and Navy, PPL Park, Philadelphia. Are you kidding me? The Army-Navy Cup and the stadium where the Union plays. I tell you, really don't miss that. It's going to be awesome. Then you see on Sunday, we have the South Atlantic Conference Men's Soccer Championship. South Atlantic Conference Women's Soccer Championship back-to-back. -back. And, of course, you can't miss your show, Dean. Right? You say it's not your show. It's your show. The Dean Linky <laughs> and the NSAA rankings and highlights show. These are becoming more important now because of coming so close to the NSA tournament selections. Big day of matchups. Big evening here in the CAA. And these are your scores. Drexel. If they win, they get the number one seed and they clinch the CAA. Yeah, but if we had one of those things that said as is right now, and this is how it ended, it would be UNC, it would be UNCW uh, going up Drexel with the tie. Uh, I'm sorry, Drexel uh, beating a college. I'm, I'm reading from the uh, side to side, <laughs> team, you know, up down. Drexel wins the game. They win no matter what else happens. Of course, UNC Wilmington needs Drexel to lose that game or tie and have this game stay the same way. And by the way, if I just confused you, we'll tell you where to go to look at all the different options. But basically, Drexel wins, they win the CAA, and they'll host it next week. And they are winning right now over Ralph Lundy's team here by a score of one to nothing. But Aiden Heaney's team keeping it alive as well because if they end up tying and UNC Wilmington wins it, they will be your champion. Here in Williamsburg, Virginia, the score at halftime is William and Mary zero. James Madison, zero. And Keith the bat sneak. we're going to hear from Chris Norris in a little bit. Uh, what do you think his message? Well, we'll find out a little bit later. We're going to take a break, step aside, pay some bills. It's halftime. William and Mary, zero. James Madison, zero. And you're watching NSCAA TV. Welcome to the Proving Ground. Disney Soccer provides elite athletes and their families a once-in-a-lifetime tournament travel experience. During our Disney Soccer Showcase, athletes have the opportunity to showcase their talents in front of the top college coaches from around the country. Teams who compete at the ESPN Wide World of Sports Complex will receive the first-class service that only Disney can offer, all while playing as a champion at the next level in the middle of the magic. From our youth tournaments such as Disney Cup International and Disney 3v3 soccer championships to our elite showcase events. There's a challenge for players of all ages and skill levels. Join us and experience everything Disney soccer has to offer both on and off the field. To apply for our showcase series or to learn more about our youth tournaments, please visit us at DisneySoccer.com. Thank everybody at Disney Soccer. Your halftime score in Williamsburg, William & Mary 0, James Madison 0. Back with more right here on NSCAA TV. In Virginia, there is a place where remarkable people have come for centuries to discover and create. William and Mary, Inspiring a nation since 1693. Continental Tires, the presenting sponsor of College Soccer Night on NSCAA TV. Registration for the 2014 NSCAA convention is now open. Join 10,000 of your coaching peers for soccer's biggest party this January 15th through 19th in Philadelphia. We guarantee that you'll learn something new from the world's best clinicians and gain new connections by attending one of the many networking socials. You can even get your coaching diplomas during the week. Visit nscaa.com slash convention for all event details. <laughs> 
Everyone knows that wood flooring cleans up so much easier than carpet. But worse than those stubborn stains is that your carpet can be home to countless germs and allergens. And the kids spend a lot of time on your floor. At Lumber Liquidators, we'll show you just how beautiful and affordable hardwood and laminate flooring can be. Shop online or at your local store. Lumber Liquidators. Treat yourself to a beautiful floor. Welcome back here to I'm here with Chris William Norris, head coach of the tribe. What sort of halftime adjustments did you make in there? Standing by uh, Chris Norris. We're going to keep the same lineup that we had to start the uh, or to end the first half, excuse me. And we have to do a better job at uh, keep making good decisions, uh, be a little bit sharper in possession. They did a good job of getting numbers behind the ball, and we've got to do a better job of breaking them down. Is that what's what's going to need to happen for you to find the back of the goal? Yeah, absolutely. We got to have more movement. We have to have better decision making, and we have to have sharper execution. Great. Good luck out there, Coach. Guys, back up to you. All right, Wes, thank you so much here as we are getting ready to start the second half here in Williamsburg, Virginia. Delighted to be with you here as I'm Dean Linky along with former Georgetown coach Keith Tabassi. Keith, that was an action-packed halftime right there here in William & Mary. Yeah, there was a lot going on, and I'll tell you what, you, you have to have a lot of time and a lot going on when, you, when you're talking about Al Albert and John Daly, of course, and the, the legends here at William & Mary. James Madison in all purple, William & Mary in the white, green and white, and Got to give both these teams credit, but uh, the visitors coming in here, James Madison, they did well in the first half. Yeah, and, and I think for them, you know, well, they, they certainly didn't want to pack it, pack it back just because of the, the season they've had and the injuries and things, and they, and they didn't do that. They weren't able to create a ton of rhythm in their game, but they certainly fought hard and then created some chances at the other end. In the second half, we'll visit with Terry Driscoll, the 18-year athletic director here at William & Mary, former NBA star. This one sent in, almost flicked there, trying to just barely nick it there with Steven Mashinsky, number 14. Looks like it's off of William & Mary. It'll be a corner kick. James yeah, Madison. Like Must have gone off the back of uh, William & Mary's defender there. Wide. In fact, that maybe if it had not hit the back, that might have just snuck into the, into the goal as well. Another corner kick here now for James Madison. Their fourth corner kick, just two for William & Mary. This one sent far post, pretty good ball. As you know who was tracking in there again. Yeah, and that was a good ball because it really, it, it both tested the goalkeeper and eliminated the goalkeeper from really being able to get it. So he, he starts to go, gets caught flat, and if someone catches it at the back post, it, another quick look at this. And, you know, gets right over top of the keeper and right out for another point. Madison and they've looked dangerous on these, uh, Dean. It's certainly been their, their best chances. That was Tom Fui from the right side. Now it's Bastidas. Bastidas with that right foot. It'll fall right at the top of the 18 and time in it up there. It's still loose. And finally handled there by Mac Phillips. But how about Jonathan Barden? He had to wait. And wait, and wait, and then he finally cranked one. Yeah, and fi finally it comes down there. But, but I'll tell you something there, too. I think... Uh, we'll Flag stays down here. It yep. falls here to Grant. Grant, number 11, down the right side, squared back in, cleared out of there, and sent out of bounds by Will Smith. And what I was going to say, as we watch how this, this ball came back out of bounds, you know, for, for their throwing, is that James wait a little bit before they make those services and we've seen some great services off the corner kicks but there's no runs making and runs happening in the box yet here's a run right now josh west trying to get to it west has support behind him here by montebell he'll go right side instead over to elbelson elbelson keeps it down and boy it looked like new city was confused there just a little bit yeah well, I think that's what happens we watch elbelson come back to, into his left side again and he's definitely coming in for that shot and, and you see that New City really didn't see that ball very well. Unfortunately, it actually got deflected a little bit. I think it was. Yeah, that's yeah. why it was deflected. Well said, Coach Keith the Batsnake with the eagle eyes up here in the booth. So we had that this first half and just the very first uh, four minutes uh, going back and forth, both teams with a, with a couple of uh, looks into the goal. 
William & Mary comes in with an 8-4 and 2 record. Keep in mind two of their games at number 5 Connecticut and also against number 8 UMBC were postponed because of rain. Those would have been pretty good matchups when you consider William & Mary number 21 in the country. Well, the thing about that too, not just good matchups, but really huge games for RPI as well that they lost. You know, and, and in that, I don't mean they lost the games, but if you tie or you win those games, even losing the games helps your RPI with that. And, you know, they would have, you know, if you even assume they had lost it, they're eight, six, and two, and get a couple more wins going into the tournament with that strong record, and they still have a chance for the uh, at-large bid. So it really hurts to, to miss those games. Carell Monroe, number 13. He is from Switzerland. A little international flavor here, of course, for... James Madison. James Madison, Tom Martin in his 28th season, as we mentioned, from Davis and Elkins. He's assisted by his son, Sean Martin, who played for him, graduated in 2007, and another player that he was Tom Foley from UConn, as you look at that replay. Absolutely, and Tom Foley, standing goalkeeper uh, for UConn, and my first stint back with the ODP program in the region in the, in the late 80s, Tom was one of uh, many outstanding goalkeepers that included Names like Tony Miola at that stage. Good ball in the space, trying to find Zachary Montebell, the senior from Winfield, West Virginia. I should say, Dean, too, with that Tom Foley is in uh, his tenth year. As we see this ball just uh, run out of bounds. In his tenth year with James Madison, he was an ODP player of youth. He's giving back now as he's now on the Region 1 ODP staff working alongside Ralph Pascarella coaching our under 14 age group. It's been fantastic to have him on board. Cleared out of bounds by James Madison. Dr. Tom Martin, talked to him yesterday. So great with his time. It's been 28 great years. I asked him how much longer he can go. He still <laughs> loves it, but he compared it to a Bob Dylan song where it's not quite dark, but it's getting there, Dr. <laughs> Tom Martin. He's a funny guy. It's not dark yet, but it's getting there, he said. Well, it, it, it should be a sign maybe, the fact that I'm sure none of his players know who Bob Dylan is. <laughs> They'll probably ask him what team did he play for, <laughs> you know. Throw in. James Madison will battle around. One back in the middle here, though, by Marcus Luster, the junior from Chesapeake. I see right now, actually, like uh, James Madison's really tried to open up a little bit, put a little, come out at the beginning of the second half, putting pressure onto William and Mary as opposed to, you know, sitting back there and just taking it with William and Mary really needing to win this game, both for getting to the CA, have a chance to win the CAA, but also really for NCA uh, RPI. This would not be a good game on your resume to tie or lose at home for NCA uh, at large bids. James Madison. They had one more pass to make as Fui was coming forward from that right back position, but tracking back is the home team, William and Mary, and now they can get some numbers. Across midfield, here comes the Tribe. Looking up top for the ball, he wanted it. it was Ben Coffey who snuck in, and earning the foul here for William and Mary. It'll be a free kick opportunity, and he wanted a foul as well as making that run forward was Albison. Yeah, I mean, Albison going in there, and, and you know, he gets the flip hoping that a card might come out also. You're thinking like, hey, I'm going right at him. But he's been he's been very dangerous coming in from that left side. And, you know, you know we see who's going to take this free kick. But this is a very good spot for William and Mary. And, uh, again, a couple very good chances in this game created by them going at players 1v1. Patel will come forward, likes to hit these with his left foot. Also coming over with a little bit of an idea for it is Chris Perez, number 10. But... I think it's going to be Patel. Where's the captain's armband as well, the senior. Now Perez. Could be a little bit of trickery here. I think Patel's going to take it, though, well, I Keith. think so. He's a very good left foot, and I, I think this suits, suits him very well. 
See if Perez, yeah, he'll leave it. Patel with that left foot that Keith talked about. Oh, my. It fooled the goalkeeper, and Keith Devastic called the left foot, and it's in. There it is, and Patel scored. This is the left back coming forward for the free kicks, his second goal of the year. Be interested, Dean, to see if that deflected or something like that. It certainly had the goalkeeper, New City, going directly to his left. And the Let's have a look there. Looks like it went straight in, unless it hit somebody on the wall or anything like that. But I'll tell you what, uh, any way you look at it, this is very needed. one nothing is going to give them some, uh, you know, some, some hope right now, uh, you know, about the CAA thing. They're probably, uh, every, everyone in the stand is going to be checking on their uh, phones now to see what the other scores are. And there we have it, one nothing, William and Mary on the free kick. And, Again, that, you know, let's not forget who created that. That was Chris Albertson coming in. Have a look at it again. In, in Near a, post, I guess. Yeah, I can't yeah, figure yeah, out what happened. It, it, might, 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 it was hard to tell, but again, it, it was hit well, and New City was not able to deal with it. The second goal of the year for Patel, for the senior from McLean, Virginia. And set up by Chris Albertson his third or fourth time creating a dangerous situation just going one-on-one -on -one. and and we thought he might be doing that a lot during the game Tyler Durbin the uh, number three for James Madison who was basically playing left back by default he's a right back normally but because of the injuries and illnesses that James Madison has had uh, he may be the least experienced player there's the man with the goal his second of the season Patel you knew he wanted to take it with that left foot bit of a gift as you look at the replay there though is New City who struggled on the shot a few minutes before that one somehow lost it through the wall Keith yeah I mean I, it, it, it's it's very difficult to say I mean you cannot tell from the from the angles that we're able to see this at you know whether you know he had a good look at it or not whether it just might have just barely skimmed somebody Now James Madison find themselves down a goal. They'll have a lot more urgency as well. They have played pretty well in this one, though. It's not like it's been a dominant performance from the home team. But nonetheless, William and Mary, they need to win and have Drexel and UNC Wilmington lose or tie if they can get that number one seed. Registration for the 2014 NSCA convention is now open. Join 10,000 of your coaching peers for soccer's biggest party this January 15th through 19th in Philadelphia. We guarantee that you'll learn something new from the world's best clinicians and gain new connections by attending one of the many networking socials. You can even get your coaching diplomas during the week. Visit NSCA.com slash convention for all the event details. And this one played in again to New City and handled the NSCA convention in Philadelphia, Keith. And I will be there in January, but you know what? I'm also going to be up there on Friday with you doing the Army-Navy game, Army-Navy Cup at PPL Park. And these two teams have been the top of the Patriot League this year. Just amazing turnarounds in their programs over the last couple of years. And, and they'll be playing, and it's going to be streamed out to armed services all over the place. And we're just so excited to be up there for, for that game on Friday, 7 p.m. Friday two days from now at PPL Park. Goal kick for William and Mary, one back by James Madison, and here comes the Dukes. Nice work by Luster. Ido Stinson from Iceland. William and Mary looking for another one, and this one cranked up from distance, not on frame. Not on frame, but certainly hit very well. And just have another look at this. Uh, just pulling off target there. Josh West, who has six goals on the year, and uh, usually finds himself a little higher upfield. But Josh West right now playing that role right in front of Marcus Lester. Luster, number 15. All right, Keith, if you're Dr. Tom Martin, you just saw that goal. We're not quite sure what happened. It looked like 
New City was a little bit confused, but you've been playing well. You've had more corner kicks than William & Mary. What do you say to your team here, even from the bench, to try to get that goal back? I, I think you just got to be really positive with the team right now. I mean, I mean, it's, needless to say, they have nothing to lose in the sense that, you know, whatever happens this game, this is unfortunately the last game of the season for them right now. But they don't want to go out on, on a bad note where all of a sudden... Back across, and they may knock one in, handled there by Phillips. Well, maybe I would tell, I was going to say all of a sudden he up the second goal, and I just have another look at this, because really well done, headed right back across, and Phillips unfortunately not getting a really strong header on that, but, but you know, it, I would, that would please me right now if I was Tom Martin. Hey, we, we, we gave up the goal, but we've come right back. There's a lot of time left, but if you give up the second goal, it's going to be very hard for this team. And, you, and, and I'm sorry, it's one of the things they've given up now, 22 goals on the year. Fooey. Tom Fooey. One back by William and Mary. And with 30 minutes and change left here in regulation, William and Mary would love to add another victory. They're 21 in the country as Chris Norris looking for another appearance in the NCAA tournament, Keith. No, and, and, and like I said, the, the, the worst thing that could happen here that would really eliminate, almost eliminate them unless they were to win the CAA was if they were to lose to James Madison uh, you know, for for RPI and all the strength of schedule things that, that need to go into that at, at large bid. This is an absolute must win for that, regardless of what happens with the CAA. There's tonight. the goal scorer, Patel. And William Mary, on the other hand, has you know it's 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 almost similar situation to, you know mentally that they really need to press to get the second goal. You know, they, they don't want to be sitting here and all of a sudden give up a corner kick or a restart late in the game and go into overtime here. They they, they want to press to get the second goal without giving up any space uh, behind them. You know, keep Marcus uh, Luster sitting there right in front of the defenders and you know maybe a little less risk there, but still go for that second one. William & Mary has scored 22 goals on the year, allowed just 14 goals. James Madison scored 25 and now have allowed 22 goals. Now remember, William & Mary beat number one Creighton back on September 15th. They look for their second goal. Idle Stinson comes in to knock it out. And now the team in purple can try to get it going. Idle Stinson, who started this, is now on it. He'll play it into space. The big man from Iceland has made a nice run. And Nigel Stinson will get it out wide to the right. It'll fall to Carell Monroe. And now it'll go out of bounds. Yeah, and you know, the pass that he makes, you know, to his player running to the corner. I mean, even if it connects, it's such, what's he going to do with it? It's such a hard pass to do anything with. And unfortunately, James Madison didn't have any other options in the center after that run was made. back up top. Jackson SK in the game. It's William and Mary one, James Madison zero here from the beautiful Albert Daly Field. And this will come all the way back. The Tribe on top one to nothing, James Madison looking for the equalizer. Flag, boy, I was wondering if that was going to go up right there. Is definitely making an early run off the spin right there was Josh Grant. Good idea for James Madison. I think it's okay to play a little direct here to test that line. No, absolutely, and, 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 and you, know, you do have to test that and, and keeping them on. And that's actually what he does the whole, the whole season is that he tends to be the one to try to stretch out the rest of the team and uh, Josh Grant, the junior from Plymouth, England. He played with the Plymouth Argyle youth system as well. And, you know, uh, six goals and two assists. And, and why not test the uh, assistant referee uh, to be on top of his game as well? Great touch by Luster on the turn. William and Mary up one nothing and looking for more. 
Elbiston again, and Elbiston with that left foot. I'll tell you what, the left-footed players here for William & Mary have been dangerous. Yeah, they're dangerous. Again, we see him coming from the right side, coming into the left. And I, and I would tell you, by now, I would think James Madison should realize that that's have some cover coming along that side. He's done it now four times. He also got the free kick that led to the goal for William & Mary coming with his left foot. And William & Mary doing the defensive work in the middle of the field. They'll win it back again. Great overlapping run here now by SK. SK, a little behind the back pass. And we'll talk to a man who knows a little bit about that in just a moment here as Terry Driscoll will join us here in the booth. Patel with that left foot. He'll switch it over to Elbiston. Elbiston will try to hang on to it. It'll go out of bounds. Look like it went off of James Madison. They'll rule it the other way as now Dr. Tom Martin will go back to his bench and bring on number eight, Eric Schmidt. Schmidt now into the game, the sophomore from Arlington, Virginia. Keith? Yeah, another one of the Virginia players, and, and Schmidt a player without a lot of playing time but one of these guys again because of the depleted roster for James Madison with their injuries that you know going to it and Tom Barton felt that he was going to have to you know not have to use him but uh, be putting him into the game today. All right as they switch it it is with great pleasure to welcome in Terry Driscoll now in his 18th year as William and Mary's athletic director as James Madison looking for more graduated from Boston College in 1969 and is a member of their Hall of Fame after a standout basketball career was the fourth overall pick of the 1969 Detroit Pistons. That's my team, Keith. He's overseen in excess of $30 million in facility renovations, including today's venue, the Martin Family Stadium, which was renovated to its current state in the spring of 2011. Terry, it's great to be with you. Thanks for having us. We really have enjoyed it. Terry Drisco, the athletic director now in 18 years, a beautiful facility and a great home for the men's and women's soccer teams. Can you share some of the story of how it came to bear the names of AI and JD? Sets here to get a little better sound for our okay. athletic director talking about Al Albert <laughs> and John Daly. Thank you so much, Terry Driscoll, as we were talking about the great Al Albert and, and John Daly. We're going to let you talk a little bit more about that as we couldn't quite hear you, Terry. But, indeed, Al Albert, uh, legendary. Talk a little bit more about the, what they've done here. Well, I, as I, we were saying earlier, that the, the field is named after John Daly and uh, Al, Al Albert, who are our, our, were our soccer coaches when – uh, the Ucraw family, who have been uh, a very, very generous benefactors to our athletic program into the college, uh, we approached them with the opportunity to help us build this field. And uh, the only request that they made was when they gave it, uh, their gift was to be named after our two outstanding coaches. At the time, they'd both been at the college for over 20 years and had, had stellar records with both their, the women's program and the men's program. So we've been very, very fortunate to have people to support our coaches and student athletes in that manner. There he is right here, Terry Driscoll. You see him on your screen here on NSCAA TV. And take a look at the height that made him a great NBA player as well. And Terry, your programs have won more Colonial Athletic Association championships than any other school in the history of the league. And the College of William Mary is an internationally recognized liberal arts university. How can you explain your program's success in such a competitive academic atmosphere? Well, we're very fortunate. We, we have a concept which we call the, the student-athlete concept where we try to uh, offer the student of academic and athletic excellence. And we've been very, very fortunate to have great coaches come to William & Mary and take on some of the challenges of recruiting from a smaller talent pool, but wanted to coach and work with student-athletes like we're able to recruit. And as a result, we've uh, been had a lot of success, as the championships will attest, uh, and we have a, with a broad-based program, we have uh, 23 sports, so it's not only been in the soccer, in football, and in tennis, and uh, lacrosse, 
you know, field hockey, we've had a little bit of success everywhere over the years, so we've been very, very fortunate. Spending some time in the booth with Terry Driscoll, a fine athletic director here as well. And now, Terry, if your soccer program is any indication, your program seemed to attract and retain accomplished coaches in a day and age when many coaches are constantly changing the next job. What do you attribute William and Mary's ability to keep great leaders on campus? Well, I, it, as I said a little earlier, I think it has a little bit to do with how we do things. Our coaches really are t teachers as much as coaches. Uh, and we look at a have kind of a holistic view of our athletic program. We want them to be really good students. We want them to be really good athletes. And we want them to be uh, really good people. So when they leave here, they'll be prepared for anything they want to do for the rest of their lives. And our coaches, that's what they, they talk about, and that's what they teach. And as a result, we've been able to keep some very, very talented people here for a very long period of time, which is, helps us uh, maintain a consistency of winning. Terry Driscoll, 18 years as the AD, as William and Mary looking for another goal. Glad that uh, you're able to spend some time with us. Thanks for having us. It's really been fantastic. You know, it's a great opportunity for us. Our, uh, our program at our level doesn't always uh, get the opportunity to be on uh, national broadcast. So we're thrilled to have you. We've got a great night. We've got a very nice crowd. So uh, we just need the right outcome. <laughs> Indeed. Well, you're holding serve right now one nothing. Terry, thanks for being with us. Thank you. Enjoyed it. All right, it's a pleasure. Terry Driscoll also... Keith Tabasic, just so you know, good friends with the pride of Toledo, Ohio, Steve Mix, who starred for the Philadelphia 76ers. Yeah, a absolutely. And, and and I guess, you know, I just might have to say the reason, you know, I let you do all the questions because you, you were the fan, the Detroit fan. I, I grew up as a Baltimore Bullets fan, you, you know, then Washington Bullets and Washington Wizards. And uh, actually, I'd have to say it really ended when they left Baltimore. But uh, uh, but at any rate, it was great to have them. And, you know, what a, what a fantastic leader, actually, that, you know, to have here at William & Mary. He said it very well as what coaches are, are supposed to be, you know, teachers and prepare these uh, young men for everything after uh, soccer ends. Of course, the president of William & Mary, Taylor Reevely, been on the job since 2008, also doing a fantastic job. With William & Mary on top by a score of one to nothing. Delighted to have you here as part of the college soccer special on NSCAA TV. I want to thank the NSCAA Director of College Programs, Rob Kehoe. With Army and Navy left on the schedule, we've seen some of the top teams in the country. UC Santa Barbara, Louisville, and the list goes on and on. No, absolutely. And uh, many of the teams that have been in the uh, top 20, top 25 have been featured uh, on, the, on these programs. And you know, there have really been some, some fantastic games, I think, all the way back to the game at Santa Barbara you know, as well, uh, where Santa Barbara lost in overtime to Stanford. And we were both saying, you know, hey, this just seems like a really good team. And yet that was the, they were four and four at the time. And now they've been on a run and have a good shot to, uh, to for the NSA tournament now. I yeah, started telling you about that run that William and Mary made back in September when they beat Creighton. And then they had a double overtime victory over then number 24, Elon. And their final victory came at then number one, North Carolina. Uh, what a run by the tribe. Yeah, well, they, they certainly made a statement back then. Back trying to make again a statement right there. Trying to make it made a statement early in the season that, that this was a team that was going to be different and better than last year. And we see this uh, turn in the cross coming in for William and Mary from Chris Perez. A decent cross there. Obviously uh, too close into the goalkeeper. Pull that ball back and give his players a chance. But, you know, Dean, we got... Uh, 18 minutes left in this game. I think, uh, again, uh, Tom Martin, you know, needs to just have his players stay positive. These are the types of things where they can be dangerous on because we've seen the services that have come in on the restarts for James Madison. And, and, and I think this is where I would worry if I was Chris Norris uh, for winning the about the chances for James Madison to score. And we see this, uh, you know, foul call there. It wasn't a whole lot actually going on. They were both, both players kind of going straight up. Marcus lost his arm coming out a little bit, but... Uh, again, I think there's been a few few fouls like that called that maybe weren't so bad. Mashinsky over the ball here with Bastidas. Bastidas looks like he wants to take it with that great right foot. He does. Pretty good ball inside the 18. And headed out of bounds off of William and Mary. Tracking over there is Chris Perez. It'll go off of his head. Couple subs coming in here now for Dr. Tom Martin. Number 19, Michael Russo will come in. And then number 15, Marcus Bjorkheim. And Bjorkheim is the redshirt senior from Norway who has battled injuries all season long as well. Yeah, and again, one of these players that, that has just hurt uh, the continuity that 
you need to have to have a successful season. And, and there's the difference in all those one goal games. James Madison trying to get the equalizer here in the final 16 and change. Knocked back in there by Tyler Durbin, who has moved over from his left center back with everybody coming forward. And this one will go out of bounds, though, back to William and Mary. Or did they whistle a foul down in the corner there? Yeah, I think, it, I think he got caught off sides. Offside. Good call by Keith Tabasic. Here's Patel. He's the goal scorer. The captain with the left-footed free kick. And your only goal in the game as the free kick came in and seemed to confuse Colin New City, the redshirt senior from Harrisonburg, Virginia, local boy for James Madison. And William and Mary not on the same page there. And that's actually been, you know, the, the thing from the beginning of the game is that they get to that spot and, and kind of complicate things. You, know, you put that ball on the ground, or especially, you know, Allison, as good as he's been at taking players on, maybe just continue that. But, you know, trying to chip a ball through there and you're already 25 yards line, it, it, it's not going to have a lot of success rate. William and Mary's featured a balanced offensive attack. Yes, Patel has the goal, but they've got four different players with double-digit points, led by Jackson SK, who scored that big goal in the win over the number one team, North Carolina. He's got five goals and five assists. Junior Joss West. Leads the team with six goals, is right behind with 13 points. And how about Chris Albertson, who I've been impressed with, leads the green and gold with six assists. And redshirt senior Chris Perez, three goals and four assists. Good balance there for Chris Norris. Yeah, it's very good balance. And, and, and all of them can have that type of game where, where they can really make things difficult for the other team. I think t today it's been Albertson more than anyone else. And now Patel will clear it. Now, you know, once again, Dean, you have James Madison, you know, just they're really going for this. I mean, they're just pressing and going up high. They're trying to, whatever happens in this game. Pressing here is William and Mary. Go ahead, Keith. Yeah, whatever happens in this game, they want to feel like they gave everything they had in their final game and, you know, forgetting about the record and just, just try to play and win this game. Youth clubs and players want to be noticed by the top college programs and the NSCA can help. Through its partnership with Elite Tournaments, the NSCA College Showcase connects you with college coaches so you can show off your talents. Clubs, players, and college coaches can find more information at nscaa.com slash events. Patel, the left back with the left foot and the goal. This one will drop and the shot cranked up, but not on frame there. Dialing up was Ben Coffey. Yeah, and Ben Coffey with that left foot is trying to bend it. You know, uh, do one of these nice highlight goals. It's laid off very well, and you know, it's just uh, you know coming across the ball, hoping to bend it that far post. And difficult shot to do. Ben Coffey, the redshirt senior from Charlottesville, Virginia, it was in Charlottesville last Friday night in North Carolina with a big win over Virginia, ending the Cavaliers' 11-game unbeaten streak. Let's see what they're going to come all the way back. Now they're looking to find out if it's going to be a corner kick or a goal kick. They'll give it back here to the home team. The Tribe will have it. They're up one nothing with 13 minutes left here. As we've talked about in the CAA, CAA tonight, going into this final uh, day of regular season, final day of regular season that there were five teams that could end up in first place and it'll be just about 10 to 15 minutes away from finding out who that will be and who will be hosting the uh, CAA tournament. And six teams get in, you get two buys uh, with the number one and two team, of course, and the winner gets the automatic bid into the NSA tournament. Nice crowd here, 1,000 plus, 1,031 at 
Albert Daly Field. Al Albert, 401 wins. Love that piece at halftime on Al Albert and John Daly. The gentleman of the game as well. No, absolutely. Uh, as we watch Jackson SK do what he does really well, he is just so good at driving past players and, and, you know, just pulling things, tricks out of his hat. And we haven't seen it a lot tonight. And it was one of the few times we've seen him able to go at players. James Madison looking for that equalizer. They've got a press here as we are a minute and 40 from the 10 minute mark here, Keith. But still a lot of time. You mentioned those scores in the CAA as we continue to track them for you. There they are, Drexo looks like they're comfortable in UNCW as well, so everybody's winning. Everybody's winning, but that means Drexel's the one. And 2 nothing down at College of Charleston, a tough place to play. And Doug Hess's team looks like they will repeat as the regular season champions in the Colonial Athletic Conference. And uh, should that continue that way, uh, congratulations to Doug and Drexel. Michael Russo over the ball as... You said James Madison. They come in four, seven, and one. Looking for the equalizer. Phillips hesitated just a second. When he came out, there was a collision. The referee lets him play on, and James Madison will send it right back into the 18. A couple players offside, but they're not involved in the play, so the flag stays down. Top of the 18. Battling for it there is Whitaker now in, and once again, Phillips will gobble it up. And Phillips got knocked pretty good when he came out for that before, as we see that. And here's as Phillips' is entry. He's played every minute of every game this year as well, and they certainly don't want to uh, to lose him, regardless of who your, your next keepers are. You, you don't want to go into the postseason uh, with somebody new. And seven shutouts on the year for Phillips. With wins over Creighton, North Carolina, and Elon, I'm going to go ahead and give them a ticket in the NCAA tournament, no matter what happens in the CAA tournament, particularly if they hang on to the score. There's no doubt in my mind that the Tribe is back in the NCAA tournament. Well, Dean Linky, I'm just going to tell you that anything can happen still, and there's still games to go. Those are big you wins. Know. Two number one teams in the country at the time. Yeah, and, and would to take nothing away from that. It's not, it, you know, what their ranking was then. I it's know, only, you I know. It's only where they are. And, you know, Creighton had not, you know, surprisingly, Creighton had not continued to, you know, to go as well as we thought they would. You They're know, this climbing back up now, yeah, still, still a quality team and, and a quality win. But what you're saying, actually, the truth to what you're saying is, is that when you get into at-large bids, wins against teams that are in the tournament, once they get selected or get in, are, are huge factors and. And that is that is certainly huge no matter what part of the season it came into. And All right, so Chris Norris, you heard it. I gave you the vote. <laughs> Keith still has you on the bubble. So <laughs> you know where to find him. He's down the road. <laughs> Over the ball here now, number 10, Chris Perez. Perez with that right foot sent in. William and Mary looking to take that two-goal lead. James Madison will handle it. Good performance here by both teams. Chris Norris's tribe and Dr. Tom Martin's Dukes. Patel, nice left foot, plays it into space for SK. We talked about some of his accomplishments this year, including that game winner against the Tar Heels. Nine minutes, 20 seconds left. See where the whistle is. They'll give it back here to James Madison. We have a look at this free kick coming in. And actually, you had, you had both uh, William and Mary players challenging for the same ball, and the James Madison player getting sandwiched in the middle of it. James Madison will send it in. It'll be punched out of there by Phillips. I'll tell you, Phillips is not a big guy for a goalkeeper. You know, you don't find goalkeepers that are at his size. You know, 5'10", they're usually six foot at the minimum going forward. But boy, he comes out well and covers that box. West does just enough to keep it alive. And 
William and Mary trying to battle for it. Alveston came over. It'll fall now to Luster. Luster will drop it back. It'll fall to SK. I thought SK would dial. Instead, he'll bring it back to Coffee. Coffee now with that left foot will switch it. Good ball into space. Could be 2 0. And a big save there from New City. Give Colin New City all kinds of credit for keeping this one at 1 0. No, absolutely. Another look at that. And he just timed that perfectly coming out. And the ball in by West is outstanding. And you know, just trying to flick the ball through for that goal. But it stays at 1 0. Seven minutes, 45 seconds left. And uh, another yellow card in the game. Yeah, that was a hard foul there by the. It was unnecessary, obviously. You know, you just come in and you're not going to win the ball. Right now. Russo has not been in the game terribly long, but gets himself into the stat sheet with his yellow card. Good look there a moment ago at Griffin, the mascot here for the tribe. Tribe. I felt like that last play was some of the best play we've seen the entire night, that combination play there from the Tribe. Well, it was, and one of the things, Dean, is that the ball stayed on the ground the whole time. You know, they were able to play that ball and make it easy to keep the ball moving on. And, you know, another look at this ball being slid out of, out of bounds. Uh, good timing for James Madison on that tackle for Tyler Durbin. Jeff Bombell is coming in for William & Mary. has played a, a lot of minutes for, for William & Mary, another one of the Region 1 Olympic development players. That it's kind of like the same as uh, Marcus Luster and uh, those players that start in the midfield, Ryan Flesh, and he starts sometimes. Kind of three of them that are all similar players, so you can't really have them all three at the same time too often. Tribe have been dynamic here in the final minutes. Luster... Cranked one up, it goes off of Reed. It'll fall back to the goal scorer Patel. Luster first times it, lofts one with his left foot. It'll fall neatly here to Bombells who just came into the game. Keith the Batsing just told you about him and they'll head this one back to New City. New City has kept the Dukes in this one. That big time save just minutes ago. Keeps it here at 1-0 and now James Madison with that momentum. We'll earn the throw in down near the corner flag. Here comes Dr. Tom Martin's team in purple. Yeah, and they're they're pushing hard to get it now. I think they would love to get. I don't. You know, we don't know how the long throw. They don't have one there, but I think they would have loved that ball to be thrown in towards the uh, end line, so maybe they'd win a corner kick. Again, I think that would be their best way to get a goal off a restart or a corner kick down there. See if they can earn that corner kick. That was the goal. It's still alive, though. It'll fall to the top of the 18. As Eitel Stinson, the big man in the back, really was not able to turn his hips on that one. No, exactly. It wasn't, get a good, it wasn't able to get a good clean hit on it. It was uh, blocked out by William & Mary. But not, not far away from being a handball, too. It wasn't. But James Madison hoping for one. And this will fall to Phillips. So many people to thank. It's been fantastic hospitality here as well at William & Mary. I want to thank Pete Clausen, part of the great William & Mary staff as well, for all the work he's done in this one. As you look there at the bench for William & Mary, Chris Norris, what a job he has done on the bench, Keith. And he's got some fantastic assistant coaches as well. That's a great assistant coaches and obviously uh, uh, fantastic mentors. Uh, with uh, with Al Albert and obviously being around John Daly as well, uh, two people that have been around quite a bit, and Brendan Bordage and John Kamara and Tom Duffy, you know, all helping him on the sideline, leading him into uh, the CA tournament. And while they, they may not be number one, unless something happens in Charleston, they'll be high up there. Here comes SK. SK with some big goals this year. New City gets a piece of it as it went falling to West. Boy, and William and Mary has played their best soccer here in the last 10. Luster will try to crank one up, not on target. 
And with four minutes remaining, William and Mary really turning on the gas. Yeah, they are. This is uh, Jackson SK coming up there. And, and, you know, he was trying to place that. I think he needed to, to hit that a little bit more. He didn't have really an angle to place with his left foot. He's good with either foot. And he could have cranked that. And then Marcus Luster is cranking that ball. Again, two decent looks at goal. And uh, I think SK uh, just took a little bit off it and uh, should have really tried to just drill that in. Nothing else. Maybe a rebound comes out. The NSCAA TV Road Show will roll on courtesy of the good folks at the NSCAA and Rob Kehoe, the director of college programs, on Friday. PPL Park, Philadelphia, Army, Navy. Enough said on that, Keith. Yeah, it, it wouldn't matter what their records are. You know, that would be a, a huge game, you know, with, with Army, Navy and mean everything. But both of them. Twelve wins, both of them. Both of them on outstanding seasons, best seasons they've had in, in a long, long time. And Russell Payne, Army, Dave Brandt, yep. Navy. New cities kept the Dukes in this one. Boy, they can strike just like that, too, as we're under three minutes. Look at the Dukes continue to fight. You got to love it. Oh, and that shot almost on frame. It was deflected. And corner kick for James Madison. 28 years, Dr. Tom Martin. Tough season, this one, but this one fighting. Yeah, and we see that shot coming in. It gets deflected wide. Now we have the corner kick. They've been so dangerous looking on these. It's sent in. It's punched out. Boy, Phillips just looked like he punched the back of Reed as that one came in. I, I wouldn't call that textbook, but it worked. <laughs> Boy, it, he almost felt like Reed should have just took one step toward that one if he could have flicked it, tucked his head down just a little bit. Of course, easier said from up here, Keith. Yeah, not many mistakes from up here, Dean. But <laughs> Boy, but you got to like the fight, though, of James Madison, Keith. Yeah, the fighter. And again, uh, you know, you, if there's a – Real danger area I would look at for William & Mary as they go into postseason, it, it's going to be defending the restarts because uh, James Madison has really shown that a lot of things open up uh, against William & Mary on the restarts. Great crew here tonight. George Krieger, Steve Shaw, Brian Krieger, our technical producer, Jeff Herrick, Brad Boyd, Tony Vaughn, Scott Jones, Andrew Taylor, Chris Scherz, Wes Kempton down on the sideline, and... Emery Camper up here, done a phenomenal job as James Madison trying to equalize, give us more soccer here. We've had a ton of overtime games on the NSC. A game of the week, and we're almost looking at another one. It's still loose. Do they earn a corner kick? you got to give it to them. Yes. Corner kick, James Madison. And just over one minute left, and again, they almost scored here. I think I might have had, uh, yeah, just a defender coming off of the defender, then out for the corner kick. Here comes the corner kick, taken quickly. Boy, New City came all the way forward as well. The goalkeeper has got to get back an empty net at the moment. James Madison's not done. They continue to fight. Still loose, bouncing around in a fall to Reed. He wanted to crank. And finally now they'll call a foul as Dolly went up there was Boyd Reed. And that should do it here, Keith. It should do it. I did, did not see where that foul came from there, but what skill by Bastidas. But there's Reed right there. Well, he's, he's swinging to hit the ball. I mean, uh, <laughs> they'll stop the clock. Yeah, th I agree 32 with you, though, seconds. Keith. I don't. I just don't think that was a foul. A foul. I and, think he uh, hit the ball too, didn't he? Yeah, he certainly may have. But if he, he didn't hit the ball, it's because the Royal Mary defender, you know put himself between the ball and the guy. I mean, it's not its not a foul. He's in the middle of taking a shot. They'll need to win this ball right here. First touch from William and Mary. Second touch won by the Dukes. They keep it alive. They are not done. They'll have one more chance at it. Sent back across a little bit heavy as Idle Stinson comes crashing in. That was the opportunity. He was making that far post run. It's back across again. Could be tied. And it's handled there by Phillips, and we will count it down. But a great effort from James Madison. Your final score, William Mary 1, James Madison 0. So as you just said it, what a tremendous effort right to the end. And we watched this right to the end. Ball coming across, headed back, perfectly headed back. James Madison players needed more than crashing. Get on the end of Mac Phillips just smothering the ball to get the win. And yet another one goal loss for James Madison. They've had so 10 
I'm sorry, 10 losses this year, nine of them by one goal, but what an effort they had today. Tribal fever in full force, a thousand plus out here at the Albert Daly Field here on the campus of William and Mary in Williamsburg. The goal coming from Rashawn Patel in the 54th minute, unassisted off the free kick, and that would be the only goal of the game, Keith. No, the only goal of the game, and it was well earned. Again, the reason they got that goal was who I thought was player of the game, Chris Albertson. Offensively, at least, he was just creating so many, uh, so much trouble for James Madison. As we see Chris Norris there uh, shaking hands with uh, both teams, talking with his teams, and Chris Norris taking them now in on a high note into the CAA Conference Tournament. And we do believe we can congratulate Drexel as well. Last word with that 2-0 win. We'll give them the number one seed and the CAA title. UNC Wilmington will fall in at number second. And I do believe the tribe will be at number three. Still a lot of uh, A lot of possibilities, yes. As you look but at it, though. They, they will all be in it. And they'll all be playing for that automatic bid. It will be Drexel hosting it in Philadelphia. You can't forget about Delaware as well, though. Who'd also be in it in Delaware, who had played all their games. And uh, Ian Hennessy's program uh, doing so well once again. And we do have the finals. There we go. Okay, so it's Drexel 1. UNCW 2, William Mary 3rd, just like we talked about, and Delaware will finish at 4th, Northeastern, and Hofstra also get in. And Hofstra gets in, and College of Charleston needed that win to have a chance to, to sneak into that 6th spot. So Drexel and UNC Wilmington with the, uh, you know, with the, uh, uh, the buys and quarterfinal matches, Dean. We have William Mary will be hosting Hofstra 7 p.m. Saturday night, Delaware hosting Northeastern also to be announced. All right, Wes Kempton is standing by with the winning head coach, Chris Norris. I'm here with Chris Norris of the Tribe. A big win to end the season. What can you take from this game going into postseason play? Well, I mean, it was a gutty performance. We weren't uh, particularly good tonight, but, uh, you know, our games with JMU, it's a big rivalry game, and uh, they're, they're always just kind of tough tough games. And, uh, you know, the fact that we were able to battle, we had a few injuries tonight, uh, some players that were out, and, and the fact that we battled and were able to scrape out a win was great. We've been conceding goals. You know, we dodged a few bullets, but to get another shutout was important for us, I think, and we'll carry that into postseason. A big ovation when the crowd was told that you're going to be playing Hofstra this Saturday. You beat Hofstra just a, a couple of weeks ago. What do you expect from that game? Uh, Hofstra's a very good team. We were lucky. We had to come from behind to win that game. And, uh, um, you know, hopefully we can get a, another good performance against Hofstra. They uh, have two of the better attacking players in the league. It'll be a big challenge for us. But, you know, to be able to play again at home was uh, the minimum for us in terms of tonight. And, and we were hoping that, uh, that we'd be able to come out with maybe a bye. But uh, to be able to play at home is, is certainly a great start for us in postseason. A, a home finale for these seniors. What have they meant to this program? Uh, they've been tremendous. Um, you know, we got uh, big performances tonight from the three seniors that were in the starting lineup, and then Ben Coffey as well, who came off the bench and played a lot of minutes. And, and those guys have they've been on championship teams here in the past, and, and they know what uh, what that takes. And so they're bringing that every night. Um, hopefully, they can stay feeling healthy and good, and, and uh, you know, be ready to go on Saturday. Sure, Coach. Thank you very much. Again, congratulations, yeah. guys. Back to you. Now, Dean, as we look at the look at these highlights coming, Adam Bastidas, who had an outstanding game for James Madison, uh, getting uh, fouled there by Marcus Luster. In this first half, we saw a bunch of this going on. It was it wasn't really a, a tremendously uh, you know dirty uh, half by any stretch, but they were certainly going at each other. And there was a yellow card was uh, given there to Alstonson. And now here's what we saw I, over and over again. The player I was so impressed with, Chris. Albiston, who kept coming in from the right side into the left, having those shots. And, you know, James Madison pressing and just missing. And that was early in, in the first half there and in the second half. And now we look again, Albiston again coming in to his left-footed shot. New City being able to get on top of that. And now we look at the goal, and this happened for Albison got fouled, and you had the senior, Roshan Patel, the senior from McLean, scoring his second goal of the year with that outstanding free kick. And a great look at the goal there by Patel. And there it is. Drexel, your final score. They knock off Ralph Lundy's College of Charleston by a score of 2-1. to one. And Drexel, your number one team in the CAA. UNCW, your number two team with that 4-2 win. And both teams doing what they needed to do tonight to try to keep things alive. Drexel winning and, of course, William & Mary doing the same.
registration for the 2014 NSCAA convention is now open. Join 10,000 of your coaching peers for soccer's biggest party this January 15th through 19th in Philadelphia. We guarantee that you'll learn something new from the world's best clinicians and gain new connections by attending one of the many networking socials. You can even get your coaching diplomas during the week. Visit nscaa.com slash convention for all event details. Hello, everybody. Dean Linky along with Keith Tabatsik. And, Keith, what a great time here in William & Mary. A big win for the Tribe. They'll go in as the number three seed. They'll go into the CA tournament as the number three seed. They'll also go in with a lot of confidence. They'll also go in with another win on their resume for the NCAA tournament should they not win the CAA tournament and get the uh, automatic bid in decent shape, as you said earlier in the game, to get an at-large bid anyways. But a lot of credit to them. But let's also give credit to James Madison. Tom Martin's team fought really hard right till the end. And it's actually amazing that they didn't have a better season with all those one-goal losses. But we saw an exciting college soccer game tonight and the CAA tournament now uh, with Drexel as the winners. And congratulations to Drexel and Doug Hess, second year in a row as the CAA conference winners. All right, well said. A great time here in Williamsburg, Virginia. As we say goodnight, want to thank our producer, George Krieger, our director, Steve Shaw, the fine crew led by Brian Krieger, Jeff Herrick, Brad Boyd, Tony Vaughn, Scott Jones, Andrew Taylor, Chris Scherz, Wes Kempton on the sideline, our stage manager is Emery Camper. My broadcast partner is Keith Tabasic. My name is Dean Linky. Your final score once again here in Williamsburg, Virginia, home of the tribe. It's William & Mary 1. James Madison Zero, and you saw it all right here on NSCAA-TV.